Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lilanthi Ward. And the question for us this morning is, what does popcorn and pop have to do with Pentecost? Come join us for worship. Pentecost is a Christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit 40 days after Easter and when thousands of people came to follow Jesus. That's when we celebrate that the church was born. It's our birthday. The Holy Spirit, however, has been present long before Pentecost and the Holy Spirit was present at creation and at the resurrection. Every fifth Sunday at St. Andrew, we have a family service led by the families of our church. And today is no different. So several of our families are participating today from their homes. Before we begin worship, I would like you to join me in a prayer that this congregation has been praying for the last two years. We call this our breakthrough prayer because we believe that the Holy Spirit has the power to transform our lives and we have seen evidence of that in our life together. Almighty God, we pray for the Holy Spirit to break through our limits into our hearts and into the hearts of others. We have faith that you will give us vision of your miraculous possibilities and reveal to us your path for St. Andrew United Methodist Church. Give us the courage to step out and trust you. Strengthen us and empower us to be living examples of your love and grace. Amen. God who moved over the deep in a holy breath. Come to us this day as we celebrate Pentecost. Alive in the wind. God, who spoke in a bush that was burned but not consumed, come to us this day as we celebrate Pentecost, arrive in a holy flame. Pour out your Holy Spirit, set us aflame, but do not consume us. Fill us with holy nourishment. Pentecost has arrived. Let's worship. Yes, let us worship. Please join in the singing as you invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill you, to bring you whatever it is that you need at this time. Be it comfort or strength, know that the same Holy Spirit that was at the beginning of creation is with us today. Holy Spirit reign. Spirit rain down 
voice be heard Come and change our hearts As we stand on your word Holy Spirit Rain down No eye has seen No ear has heard No mind can know What God has in store so open up heaven, open it wide Over your church and over our lives Holy Spirit rain down rain change our hearts as we stand on your word Holy Spirit rain down let your power fall let your voice be heard come and change our hearts we stand on your word, Holy Spirit, rain down. The Holy Spirit is a mystery and has been manifested in many different ways. But for our time today, we want to recall the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms our very lives. Students from Fairbrook Elementary School began singing together at St. Andrew last September. We had six students and after Christmas we grew to 12 students. Was the Holy Spirit at work? Absolutely. Not only in numbers but also with the students. They grew in confidence and were all blown away when they sang in parts at the last time they sang together before the restrictions. When Jesus knew that hard times were coming for his disciples with his death, he gave them a promise. And it's in John 14, verses 25 and 26. And he said that Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come and remind them of everything that Jesus had taught them. He then gave them his peace. Now what I've discovered is that whenever I am troubled or anxious or afraid, I can call on God and the Holy Spirit comes to bring me a peace that passes my understanding. 
And sometimes I've used this breath prayer to help me, where I say, come Holy Spirit, fill me when I take a breath in, and then as I breathe out, saying, release my fears. See, my hope is that you too will experience the presence of God's Holy Spirit even as you listen to the words of the songs and prayers as well as prayers spoken and unspoken. You see, Scripture reminds us that the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings when we don't know what to say. So please, join me in preparing for prayer as we sing And if the hymn is unfamiliar to you, be conscious of your breathing and invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. Breathe on us, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with As we pray together today, there is a response within the prayer. Following each pause, let us share together the words, Give us your spirit, Lord. Let us pray. We remember today how the coming of God's Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost changed the lives of the disciples. Loving Lord, thank you for the joy of the disciples. We need this gift of joy. Give Give us your your spirit, spirit, Lord. Thank you for the courage of the disciples. We need the gift of courage. Give Give us us your your spirit, spirit, Lord. Thank you for the goodness and unselfishness of the disciples. We need these gifts. Give Give us us your your spirit, spirit, Lord. Thank you for the way the disciples spread the good news of your love. We need to be messengers. Give Give us us your your spirit, spirit, Lord. Thank you for the disciples' certainty that Jesus would always be with them. We need his friendship and help. Give Give us your your spirit, spirit, Lord. Lord, help us to feel your living spirit present with us at all times and to remember the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, as it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and and began began to speak speak in other languages, languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, residents of Crete and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Then Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show protents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In the story of the day of Pentecost, there was a show of power. There was power in the wind. The wind that for us as Christians is the ruach, the Hebrew word for wind, breath of God, or the spirit of God. This Ruach is the very breath of life that empowered humanity made in God's image. This power can't help but get our attention and make us witnesses to all, to the ends of the earth, as we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You know, I can imagine the disciples as they were awaiting this gift from God, full of fear, but yet in full anticipation of what would come to them from the one they had followed, loved, grieved, and celebrated. They were each, I believe, individual expressions of potential at that time. If we try to think of them in the midst of the confusion and the uncertainty just waiting for their faith to burst forth, It reminds me of what happens when kernels of popcorn with the presence of heat or some external power burst into a tasty and satisfying gift for us to enjoy. Well, we would not be inclined to eat these hard kernels. I don't think any of you would want to do that. But we can get fully engaged in the light and the fluffy popped corn. The unpopped kernels here are just like our hardened hearts and our hardened spirits, keeping us from realizing the potential that God has planned for us. But the popped corn, it represents our freed spirits, our expression of the Holy Spirit that takes our burdens and gives us a purpose, the purpose that God has planned. Here we go. And now I can hear it. Woo! And we can see it. Not just one kernel, but many. That day of Pentecost 
was so much more than a fulfillment of a promise. It was an incredible, full immersion experience for those who were there. The senses were totally engaged. They saw the flames and they felt the warmth of the fire, sensing its power. And they heard the wind and they felt its power as well. To truly capture our attention, our senses need to be involved. The best part of the popcorn experience captures our senses. The sound of the kernels popping, the smell of the popping corn, and the taste of the light, white, fluffy kernels. Our senses pull us into our experiences. And this, I believe, was God's plan that day and is still God's plan today. If we imagine the fullness of this experience, the fullness of that first Pentecost, we can engage our senses too and be fully present with our own senses on this Pentecost day. In Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, chapter two, verses one through five, Paul tells them that he did not come to them with words of his testimony, but he came with the full power of the experience of the Holy Spirit that had captured his senses and could also capture theirs. Friends, our faith is not just a collection of thoughts and ideas. It is a real experience of the power of God. Experiencing the power of God is incredible. And experiencing the power of God means that there is a change, just like the change in the popcorn that Deb described. The power of the Holy Spirit is made evident in many ways prior to this Pentecost day. All of creation was made through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism like a dove, perhaps also signifying a gentleness and peace. But then that same Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil. And you would think that this would have drained him. But he had an incredible strength to resist the devil that could only have come from the power of the Holy Spirit. Two people can look remarkably similar on the outside, but when adversity comes, it's what's on the inside that matters. Now these two cans look very identical. But when I squeeze this one, it crushes. But I can try as hard as I might to crush this one. And it won't. Why? Because it's full. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have an inner power that gives us the strength to overcome adversity, heartache, loss, or disappointments. The Spirit gives us the same power not only to resist temptation like Jesus, but also to be bold in speaking out for Jesus like Peter. Remember Peter? He was a disciple that denied ever knowing Jesus, not once but three times. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter was a different man. He was bold. He was not at all afraid to speak out about Jesus. He shouted out, reminding the people of the prophecies from of old and how Jesus was a fulfillment of these prophecies. Peter and the disciples received power to speak words they had not uttered before so that everyone in Jerusalem would understand the message. They received power to give a message that touched the hearts of thousands who came to believe in the risen Christ as Savior. So what does this mean for us today? 
It means that we too, like Peter, can be transformed to tell others about Jesus and to let them see Jesus in us by our actions and our words. Whether it's at the grocery store or on Facebook, does our public life reflect our faith or our fears? Today, friends, more than ever, People need to know that they are not alone in this pandemic. That we have nothing to fear. Not even death. Because Jesus, whom we believe, has conquered the grave when he rose from the dead. You see, the disciples were transformed into a new norm. And we too are in a new norm. One that can, by the power of the Holy Spirit, working in and through us, bring about a kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. A people whose hearts are turned towards God. You see, God's Holy Spirit is transforming each of us daily. And he's transforming me to face my fears and to trust and obey. I would not be here in front of a camera otherwise. So how about you? How are you being transformed with God's Holy Spirit to tell your story? Will you allow God's Holy Spirit to fill you with power so that you won't be afraid of what you might be called to say or do. Because friends know that when you are filled with the Spirit, God gives you an inner strength through the Holy Spirit. Our next hymn is a prayer to unleash the power of God's Spirit through us into the world. You see, and there's a rippling effect of transformation that starts with each one of us. We want God to build his kingdom. Won't you join me in singing and praying together? Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil while we're made come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls holy spirit come invade us now we are your church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom
into a new week, may you experience God's presence. May you feel God pouring out the Holy Spirit over your heads and your thoughts and your words over your lips. Over the hearts and your feelings and emotions and your compassion for all others. And over your hands and your feet as you put into action all that God commands you. Let us affirm who we are as the church, as we sing together. We have a story to tell to the nations that will turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy, a story of peace and light, a story of peace of calm God is with us in our moments of life God is with us we go as a Pentecost people touched by fire stirred by the wind to mend the world Alleluia, Alleluia. 